Welcome to the Native KC. Kansas City has always shared a cousin or kin-like connection to the Bay Area in Northern California. Some may contribute it to our taste in music or culture. Others make the connection to manufacturing and agricultural advancements during the well-documented first and second great migrations. Where African Americans desperate to climb out of the brutal, generational discriminatory practices of sharecropping systems of the Midwest and the South, they sought refuge on the West Coast. So spanning over the course of around 60 years of the Great Migrations, although each period unique in their own right, both provide examples of how deep the connections between the Kansas City and Bay Area are. But this channel is dedicated to going even deeper, and this episode is dedicated to an American hero and Kansas City area legend, Hiram Young. Now it's probably safe to say that Hiram wasn't featured in a lot of history classes in the public school systems in the United States. And as sad as it may seem, there's very little information about Hiram Young that's been preserved. So be sure to share what you've learned about this brother who coupled love, skill, ambition, and determination to become one of the wealthiest entrepreneurs in American history. Hiram was born a slave around 1812 in Tennessee, and since a very young boy, he was a master carpenter. He was well taught as a craftsman and found pure delight in building and designing with his hands. And in 1847, Hiram is moved to Independence, Missouri with his owner. This move and the rapidly growing need for covered wagons for the gold rush and the bustling Santa Fe Trail created the perfect opportunity for Hiram to put his skills as a carpenter to work. Now, while still a slave, Hiram during these times started to build ox yokes and covered wagons on the side. Durable and designed to withstand the journey to the Northwest, word quickly spread to newcomers to the Kansas City area that Hiram was the man to see to build a covered wagon that would last. Hiram, thinking generationally, took the early earnings from his profits on the side and purchased the freedom of his wife, Matilda. Now, during these days, a child born would take the legal status of slave or free of the mother. Hiram desired his children to be born free, something he'd often tell himself as a child growing up as a slave in Tennessee. Now, with his wife, Matilda, free, Hiram continued to crank out ox yokes and cover wagons as thousands of 49ers. Wait, what, I said 49ers. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, okay, I'm back. What was I saying? Okay, yeah, so, you know, it was 49ers flocking to the Midwest. Um, in the Kansas City area, they were trying to strike it rich, and Hiram didn't miss this opportunity. He'd actually earned enough to not only purchase his own freedom, but by 1860, Hiram was on Lexington Avenue in Independence, Missouri at the slave auction next to would-be slave masters, purchasing as many slaves himself as he could. His goal was to purchase slaves, keeping as many of the families together as possible, paying his slaves so that in return they could pay him back, start their own businesses, and purchase slaves themselves. Now Hiram Young's companies at their height were bringing in millions annually, using the standard inflation calculators of today. He was well known to having whites working at multiple plants or on properties he and his family owned in the Kansas City area at this time, and with hundreds of acres spread throughout the region, Hiram valued education, vowed to ensure that his children and the newly free slaves who climbed up through these systems understood the importance of teaching others the basic principles of economics and the power of working together. 
even with major building contracts with the United States. The destruction the Civil War would bring to the country and to Hiram's businesses were just too much to withstand. Missouri, the absolute last state to outlaw slavery, was a hotbed for rebel militias. And as the fighting in the area intensified, a wealthy black man with white people working for him during this period, Hiram and his family were open targets. He eventually shuts down his operations and moves his family to safe areas in Oregon and Kansas. When he returns after the Civil War, he finds his homes and businesses destroyed and looted. Despite multiple attempts and appeals to the government to restore him for his losses and damages, the war caused, he ultimately concedes and is left with nothing. Hiram Young and Company would become the first African-American business to ever file suit against the United States government for damages caused by the Civil War. Now Hiram is still determined to pick himself up, so he starts other successful businesses taking advantage of the growing rail industry that's about to take off in the Kansas City area at the time. He sends his only daughter, Amanda, to Oberlin College, one of the most prestigious colleges in the country that accepted women and black people in Ohio. For Hiram, they eventually named a school after him in the Kansas City area, and he and his wife Matilda, they died prior to knowing the outcome of the claim that he had filed with the United States government for his business and properties. In 1907, well after his passing, the U.S. government eventually threw out the claim after years of designed and deliberate stalling tactics, and his estate eventually collapses under enormous debt. His daughter, Amanda, had become a premier educator in the Kansas City area and even taught and became a principal at the Hiram Young School, named after her late father. Amanda passed away in Kansas City in 1913. Hiram Young is a tremendous example of how far a man with a dream, skill, and determination can go, despite the obvious and relentless obstacles. Hiram used his craft to build a legacy for not only his family, but for generations of others that impacted the world. I mean, coming from slavery, he did business that empowered other African Americans to be entrepreneurial and develop an educational and economic system that set them free, literally. A devout man of God, Hiram Young and his family were also founding members of the African Methodist Episcopal Church in Independence, Missouri. According to some scholars, Hiram Young's wealth was 60 to 70 times more than the average Jackson County, Missouri resident at the time. Round of applause for Hiram Young and the Hiram Young and Company business. Hiram should always be remembered. Until next time, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, this is the Native KC.